Hey you guys, so today I thought I would sit down and just kind of talk to you guys about some things that are on my heart and on my spirit. I would love to know in the comments down below as we get into this video if you guys have similar experience with what I'm talking about today, how you got through it. I'm willing to bet that with the current state of things, we're all feeling a little bit of unrest, anxiousness, and just confusion about the future. I'm gonna link everything that I'm using in the down box below, but I'm gonna be working mostly out of the Christine Dominique Latte Palette. It's one of my favorites that I used to use all the time and I haven't pulled for it in months ever since I got my Makeup Geek Matrix system. It's been all I've been using, so I thought I'd kick it old school. So at the time of recording, because I have no idea when you're watching this video, it could be today, it could be in three months, we are just now getting to a place in the country where people are starting to come out of isolation. I'm sure there's just tons of us who are feeling, just kind of feeling it, man. Like this year has been so wild and now we got murder hornets apparently to contend with. It's just, it's been nuts. And I can only speak for myself personally, but all of this stuff that's been going on was like perfect timing, if you will, not to make this about me, but my mom died in December and that was already enough to contend with and try to figure, figure out. Like I've never had anyone so significant in my life die before. This was a huge, huge change in my life. And then closely following that, all of this stuff started too. And it's just been so hard. After my mom died, I took two months off of creating content. And even though that was absolutely necessary for me to do for the sake of my own mental health and my sanity, I still feel like a weird sense of remorse and regret around that decision. Because if you guys don't have social media, if you don't know anything about it or what it's like to work in it, your social media platforms are like living things and your energy that you put into them in the form of creating content, editing, uploading, posting, engaging, that is like the food, water, and sunlight for that living thing. And if you don't do that, it starts to kind of die. And social media platforms, YouTube algorithms, all those things do not care what's going on in your personal life. It doesn't care. The wheels are gonna keep turning whether you're in the car or not, so to speak. And that was just such a big lesson for me that especially now with what's happening I'm wondering if you guys are experiencing something very similar where maybe there was a goal or an objective or something you were working towards and then a situation presents itself completely out of your control that totally derails any progress or any hope you have of achieving said goal. I feel like that is a universal situation we are dealing with right now because Miss Rona doesn't care about what we were working on. It doesn't care that we had graduation around the corner. It doesn't care that we had trips booked. It doesn't care. Like it is stopping all of us in our tracks and we might kind of feel like kind of victimized by it and it's not fair and woe is me. And it's a very difficult energy to sit with. That is something I remember telling my best friend after my mom died. I was just like, you know, all of 2019, I worked so hard. I made so many strides in so many areas of my life that I was so proud of, but it didn't actually end up mattering because something like the death of a loved one or something serious like that, it's going to happen no matter how hard you're knocking things off of your to-do list. Like you can't outrun life, no matter how much you're trying to put it in little categories and plan for it and work around it. Like you can't control everything. And that was truly, truly a very difficult lesson for me to have to learn at the time that I was forced to learn it, even though it just kind of feels like I'm continuing to have to learn it in light of current circumstances. Basically, when I came back to work and wanted to resume things as if, it's almost like I wanted to come back to work and I thought if I hide in my work, then nothing can get me. Everything will be fine. And that's not true. It's not what's happened at all. If anything, it's put a magnifying glass on the elements of my work and of my career and of my future that are not working for me anymore. Or And it's so hard to stay optimistic when not only do we have no control over elements of just life and things that are going on, but particularly when you work in social media, there's only so much control you have over that as well. So before my mom passed away, I was like a machine. Do you know what I mean? Like I worked all the time. I felt very invigorated by my work. I was in the zone. If any of you guys work for yourselves, you know what I mean? Like sometimes you'll hit a stride where you just, 
can't stop, won't stop. And that's where I was. I was really happy within that space as well. I just felt super connected with my audience and my intentions and things just seemed so amazing. So honestly, the work was easy to do because of that. But when I came back, I just did not have that to give anymore at that time. Like I was processing the loss of my mother and trying to remain calm during all of this craziness. So when I came back, I was kind of up with the mindset, like I'm probably gonna do the bare minimum and bare minimum I did. And that's why I did a declutter series. I mean, it was something that had been on my to-do list for a long time, but it takes no preparation, research or energy to just pull out a bunch of makeup and talk about why I don't want to keep it anymore. That was super easy content. Pretty much everything I had been doing up until about a month ago was just in pursuit of like, what is the bare minimum I can do? And there's a part of me that felt super guilty about that because the whole reason I do the type of content that I do as a whole is because I'm very bored when I have to do something that comes too easy to me. And doing something like, let's talk for 20 minutes about this product, like that is boring to me. I understand lots of people enjoy watching that content and lots of people enjoy making that content, but that is not my journey. So I started coming back recently to try to give it my all, you know, really want to put my head down and try to get back in the zone. I've recently started re-recording my podcast and there's a whole lot of work that needs to happen with that. But I still find myself feeling very lost right now because I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know where I want to go. And I know, like I said, I don't want this video to be like, let's talk about me and my problems. I just, I want to talk about this because I'm pretty sure many of us are experiencing a similar thing where it's like, all of this that's happening right now is just changing the way we see so many things in our futures. We don't even know truthfully how this is going to affect things big picture and for how long it's going to do so. But at the same time, like we can't stagnate. We can't give up. We have to keep trying. We have to find meaning in these difficult times because Difficult times are inevitable. Now this might be a difficult time unlike any one we've ever had before, but that's also how I felt when my mom died. Like I had no data, I had no experience, I had no idea how to navigate that. Much the way I don't know how to navigate this, this shit we're dealing with either. There's so much conflicting information out there and I talked about this in a um, Instagram post not too long ago as it pertains to fitness. And I didn't even know this was a thing, you guys. Like apparently there is this huge conversation going around about how it is toxic for people to be making content around productivity and around working out and at home workouts and all that stuff right now. Like there's a whole school of thought out there that says that we should not be focusing on being productive or taking care of our fitness during a pandemic, which, I guess I understand it. If you're gonna come at it from a, per, a place of like, like being productive or um, working out is a punishment, then yeah. It's going to feel like a really inappropriate time to subject yourself to any type of punishing behavior or triggering or frustrating or stressful behavior. Like I'm not arguing that people should do anything that makes them unhappy, but I will also say as someone who once again had to deal with a huge loss in my life on top of all of this, I know that for me personally, if I just sink into that and like let it govern my entire life and all of my decisions, it doesn't make me feel better. That's also not to say that there is truly any kind of one size fits all prescription for tough times. There's definitely not. We're all gonna handle things in the way that is most comfortable for us. But I think what I'm trying to say is explore other ways of coping and be aware of the fact that if your way of dealing with stress is not actually self care because I think we can really believe that drinking wine in the bathtub in a face mask is self care, hashtag self care. And for some of us that might be and in, in certain quantities, yeah, that's amazing. But the way I explained this in my Instagram post was like, you have to think of self care as the same way you think of caring for anybody you love in your life. Like if your dog 
or your toddler or your best friend or somebody like that was having a hard time, like your way of caring for them would be like eat nutritious food, get outside, move your body, get some fresh air, meditate, take in some positive information. Like we can't conflate self-care with vices because it's not the same thing at all. And during this time for me, like everything inside of me wants to do nothing but just wallow and woe is me and poor Whitney and this is so hard for me. There's definitely times that I give that to myself if it's truly what I feel like I need. I'm not a robot but I'm trying to find my way. Any plans that I had for what this year was gonna be are just getting thrown out the window left and right. I mean, I thought this year was gonna be the year of skincare for me because I thought <laughs> I was gonna go to esthetician school and I'm not completely abandoning that either at this moment, but new information has come to light, new insights, new like, feelings and circumstances have just brought a lot of alternative um, paths before me. So I truly thought this was just gonna be the year where I kind of got into talking about product again and all that kind of stuff. And I tried doing it and talking about it, but that was particularly during a time that my views and things like that were down. So I was like, all right, nobody wants to hear me talk about this stuff, which is ironic. <laughs> Because every time I post a video, like you can't win. You know what I'm saying? Like particularly as an influencer, you can make content where you're like, I love this and I love this. And people are like, sell out, liar. And if you talk about things you don't like, people are like, you're negative. So I'm just like, I don't know what to do, man. I certainly do not live or create content for others. I mean, I do, like I want you guys to enjoy what I'm making, but feedback ultimately is only gonna play so much of a role in what I want to do. Like I have to do what feels good to me because this job is hard enough without having to hate doing it the whole time. There's a lot of conversations happening right now around whether or not beauty content, beauty products, companies, all that stuff should be acting as if nothing is happening. Um, I cannot speak for everybody else. I can't, I can't sit here and be like, this is my opinion on this and so it is and it is right. Like that's not it at all. Um, it's so nuanced and I think that is something that we really need to embrace a lot more of in the beauty community. It feels like everything has to be so black and white, good and bad, villain, hero, and that's just not realistic. So there's just a lot of frustration that I'm seeing around people not acknowledging this time and how difficult it is for others. But to that, I would say like a lot of people, and I talked about this in a video recently, treat the beauty industry and always have treated it as escapism and they don't want that outlet taken away from them. So I'm really interested, like how do you guys think we should be handling this time? Like what other content outside of beauty related content are you guys watching in this time to kind of help you get through it? Now, there's lots of people who put on a little bit of makeup and a brow and run a curling iron through their hair and that is all they need to get through the day. But at the same time, beauty is just not something I can talk about all the time anymore. I thought the no buy was the solution to that. And for a time it was, it truly opened me up to other topics and things to discuss. Like for example, I'm filming two other videos today, but after all of these three videos that are getting filmed today are done, the next series of videos that are going up are kind of like an investigative uh, uh, journalism kind of thing where I just wanna talk about like the consequences of black market beauty and all the different things it affects and why it is and how it came to be and the cause and effect of all of it. Like I can talk about that kind of stuff all day. The psychology of marketing, the psychology of beauty, culture, all that stuff, so interesting to me. I find it fascinating, um, especially because I feel once again, it's a very nuanced subject. It's not good or bad, it's not black and white. It's really gonna come down to the individual person but even talking about that all the time, like I was telling my husband while I've been working on this series, I'm like, I kind of can't wait till it's over because it's really hard on my spirit. Like it's really sad stuff ultimately. I think it's an important conversation that needs to be had, but after I have it, I don't want to talk about sad stuff like that for a while because it's just a lot. And then I was like, 
well, what do I want to talk about? Like, what are the positive, like uplifting, inspiring things I want to talk about? So I come to you guys. Like I do so much when I need to find my way and figure out where your, where your heads are at and what I can do to service that and kind of help you right now. I can only speak for myself, but where I turn to when I need some inspiration or I need a kick in the butt or where I can feel my most empowered is just not the beauty community. And it hasn't been in years, you guys. Like, I do not, I could put a hand on a Bible or any other holy figure and swear to you that I have not been a consumer of beauty content in a long time. It is rare. I think last year, the end of last year, I kind of went on a binge where I was watching a lot of Jamie Page and Alana Davison or Davidson. I'm sorry if I'm saying that incorrectly. But outside of that kind of little, little binge I had, it's not a thing for me. I'm not interested in it. You know, I was interested to see if that was gonna change when the no buy was over. There are a handful of launches that come out every month that I'm even like, huh, about. Which is why I make so many videos where I criticize it because I just look at it and I think it's kind of stupid. And I understand a lot of people don't. I'm not saying you are stupid. I'm not saying what you choose to do with your money is stupid. I'm not saying that my way of thinking or looking at this is superior. I'm only talking about my experience. And it just kind of got me thinking, you know, like maybe, and I'm not trying to give a whole lot of weight to people who call me negative. And I just can't, I can't give every single person who says something about me that I think is really, I don't even know, distilled down into a completely unhelpful bit of information. Calling me negative in spite of the fact that my videos are well researched, well thought out. I joke and make try to make light of it and have a good time for you to just still be like, that's negative. Like that's, I, I take it with a grain of salt, but I do still take that grain of salt. And I started thinking about it and I was like, why is it so easy, so natural for me to make content around beauty that kind of has that like sassafras tone to it? Why is that what I keep returning to? And the truth is, it's because I don't care about this stuff. Not the way I should to be working in beauty like this. So for me, like trying to notice and be aware of why my content has the angle that it does and, and what I can do to bring more value. Like I can point out all day and twice on Sunday, this isn't working, this is wrong, here's the problem with this, but I need to bring more solutions to you guys. And I'm looking for more solutions on top of that. So that's what I wanna know. Like what are you guys interested in right now? And please, for the love of God, feel free to not make it about beauty because I'm ready to expand this conversation. What actually interests me and the content I'm benefiting from the most, not even just now, in general. Like I said, I don't watch beauty related content. I just don't. I like stuff about like how to get your shit together because I need that. And especially as somebody who works for themselves and has a family, like there's a lot of things, a lot of things on my plate I have to take care of. I'm very interested in money. Um, learning how to manage my money better because I have big picture goals I want to achieve. Goal setting in general, healthy habits, um, healthy habits that actually do lend itself to your beauty routine, like glowy foods, how to eat better for performance and for um, better looking skin. All of those things, uh, books, you know, things like that are so much more interesting to me and I feel like would add so much more value than me just being like, I don't like this shit. Like, I don't, I don't know if that's the tone I want to bring anymore, or at least not only that. I mean, I, I've never felt like that's all I do, but I want to talk to you guys about things that help me. Like my spiritual practice is very helpful. Journaling, things like that. I've, I've, for those of you who've been watching me for a long time, you're probably like, yeah, Whitney, we've heard you say this before. You never actually do it. But I feel very called now, truly called to just take a chance and do something different. I honestly don't know, you know, how people are going to do beauty guru stuff forever without an end goal. Having an audience is great. Like I have 134, 133,000 people, which I know isn't a million, but that's a lot of people who subscribe to me on YouTube. And I have like 
almost 15,000 um, subscribers, or excuse me, followers on Instagram. And I have 3,000 people in my Facebook group. Like there are people watching me. But if all I'm gonna do is just get on here and just make a video, two videos a week for the rest of my life, like not only does that not sound like something that's realistic, it also doesn't sound like what I want to do. What I want to do is help you guys. Like I've really had to sit down and kind of pare down each motivation for my actions to like what truly makes me feel happy. And it's teaching. I've always loved teaching people how to do stuff. And I just know so much more about so many more things than just makeup. Like I've always said that I have so many more interests. I'm a very curious, passionately curious person, which again is why I like doing videos where I kind of talk about the idea of things or excuse me, the idea of beauty, the concept of it. Beauty is a system, marketing, like it's really just an interest I have in learning about things. But I'm trying to think back to like what I used to love to do when I was a kid, even before makeup. I mean, I've literally loved makeup since I was a kid, but that's not what I did for fun when I was a kid. I'm really just trying to find what lights me up, what I love to do. What types of videos do I get most excited about? What types of videos and content do I get most excited to consume? Where can I be of service to my audience? Like these are just all the big questions I'm asking myself. And I'm basically what I wanted to do is like have this, this dialogue with you guys. Like what, what do you do personally in the situation that we find ourselves in now? What are you doing to kind of give yourself direction and give yourself something to, to cling to? I think we need that right now. We need a sense of someday. Because right now it feels like a never ending, who knows, everything's up in the air, but it costs nothing and it hurts nothing to at least dig deep and figure out what motivates us and like what we can do to make ourselves happier in the long run, in the big picture. Does that make any sense? Am I being too woo woo right now? I don't know if this video is gonna be watched by anybody. I don't know if anyone's gonna get anything out of it. I don't know if it was boring or rambly or if there's a concise message in here at all, but I know I feel better having talked about this with you guys. I really needed to get this off of my chest and like put it out into the universe and say that I am open to receiving messages and finding my way and really just taking my wealth of knowledge on so many subjects to the next level and really using them and helping people with my knowledge. Like I would love for there to be a 60, 40 split on my channel, like 60% beauty, beauty related subject. No, I would actually even say 50, 50, maybe 40, 60 the other way. 40% beauty, 60% lifestyle, business, organization, productivity, positivity, resourcefulness, getting your life together. Like I feel like my audience is just in that place too. Most of you guys are between the ages of 25 and 35, or no, 26 and 35 and older. So I think maybe that's just what we're all thinking about right now too. Like we're trying to take it to the next level. I don't know. I'm gonna do my lips off camera really quick and then I'll be right back. All right guys, this is the end of this video. I know it was super all over the place, really rambly. I didn't talk anything about what I was doing to my face or what I'm using, but like I said, I will link everything down below. I just wanted this to kind of be part one of a bigger conversation I'm interested in having with you guys. Last year, I did a similar thing. You know, I did my no buy and I had a video where I kind of set the intention and I talked about where I was and then it was easy for me to create content in service of that kind of like mission statement. So potentially this is my new mission statement where, where I'm coming from, but more importantly, I hope that I was able to kind of open your mind to maybe something you haven't been thinking about or give you some direction for maybe things you're thinking about a lot. But more than anything, I just kind of wanted to get a temperature check from you guys. Like, how are you feeling? What's going on with you? How are you dealing with these big emotions? Like, are you learning anything new about yourself in this time? How do you see all this changing you? I've never been through a difficult time in my life, not once, that didn't change me for the better in the long run and didn't end up opening doors to so many more important things for me. So I'm really interested. I wanted to keep this on a positive note. Like we all know things are hard, but we have to try to stay positive. We have to keep the faith. So I hope all of you guys are having an absolutely amazing day. And as always, I'm getting my thoughts together for the May content. So 
I will be taking some polls over there, getting an idea of what we're interested in. Patreon is a great place to come hang out if you want bonus content, if you want to participate in the live streams, participate in polls, get to know each other. My favorite thing about Patreon so far is I've got to see some of my patrons like take care of each other and be there for each other and be a friend to each other and be supportive of one another. I think it's so, so cool. Also definitely come hang out in the Warpaint Facebook group, link down below. Working on getting the podcast up very soon. So information about those episodes unrolling will be popping up here in the near future. So keep your eyes peeled and uh, yeah, I got to get out of here. Got lots of videos to film today. I hope you're having an amazing day and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.